meeting with the command element has underscored the need for us to collectively, collectively processes that return our nation to normalcy. So all our people can go there unhindered in an environment of perfect peace and security, assured that law and order obtain and prevail as before, and endure into if there is any one of any one observation made and drawn from events of the past week, it is the unshakable pedestal upon which rests our peace, law and order, amply indicating that as Zimbabweans we are generally a peaceably disposed people and with a givenness to expressing our grievances and to resolving our differences ourselves and with a level of dignity, discipline and restraint so rare to many other nations. This is to be admired. Indeed, such traits form the pith of our personal character and personality. Yes, a veritable resource we summon and draw upon in times of vicissitudes. The operation I have alluded to did not amount to a threat to our well-cherished constitutional order, nor was it a challenge to my authority as head of state and government. Not even as commander-in-chief of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. To the man, the command element remained respectful and comported with the dictates and mores of constitutionalism. True, a few incidents may have occurred here and there, but there are, these are being corrected. I'm happy that throughout the short period, the pillars of state remained functional. Even happier for me and arising from today's meeting in a strong sense is a strong sense of collegiality comradeship now binding the various arms of our security establishment. This should redound to greater peace and offer an abiding sense of security in communities and in our entire nation. Among the issues discussed is the re that relating to our economy, which as we all know, is going through a difficult patch. Our great concern, our great concern to that guide, the operations of all its organs. No, that jump. Of greater concern, may I read this again? I beg your pardon. Of greater concern, to our commanders are the well-founded fears 
that the lack of unity and commonness of purpose in both party and government was translating into perceptions of inattentiveness to the economy. Open public spurts between high-ranking officials in the party and government exacerbated by multiple conflicting messages from both the party and government made the criticisms leveled against us inescapable. In the midst of all this, flagship projects already adopted by government stood stalled or mired in needless controversies. All this now has to stop as we inaugurate a new work culture and pace which will show a strong sense of purpose and commitment to turning around our economy in terms of our policies. That's it. Government remains committed to improving the social and material conditions. Material conditions of the people. Government will soon unveil an un entrepreneurial skills and business development program which will empower and unleash gainful projects at our growth points and rural areas. Fellow Zimbabweans, we are a nation born out of a protracted struggle for national independence. Our roots lie in that epochal struggle whose goals and ideals must guide our present and, stru and structure our future. The tradition of resistance is our collective legacy whose core tenets must be subscribed by all across generations and across times. Indeed, this too was a great concern for our commanders, who themselves were makers of that revolution, and often at very tender age and at great personal peril. We still have in our various communities veterans of that founding struggle who might have found the prevailing management of national and party issues quite alienating. This must be corrected without delay, including ensuring that these veterans continue to play central roles in the lives of our nation. All recognize that their participation in the war of liberation exacted lifelong costs, which whilst hardly repayable, may still be assuaged and ameliorated. In respect of the party and the party issues raised by the commanders and by the general membership of ZANU-PF, there too stand acknowledged. These two stand acknowledged. They have to be attended to with a great sense of urgency. However, I am aware that as a party of liberation, ZANU-PF has over the years written elaborate rules and procedures that guide the operations of all its organs.
and the person. Indeed, the current criticism raised, raised against the command element, but, uh, against it by the command element, and some of its members have arisen from a well-founded perception that the party was stretching or even failing in its own rules and procedures. The way forward thus cannot be based on swap, vying cliques that ride roughshod over party, party rules and procedures. There has to be a net to the guiding principles of our party as enshrined in its constitution, which must apply fairly and equitably in all situations and before all members. The era of victimization and arbitrary decisions must be put behind as so as we all embrace a new ethos predicated on the supreme law of our party and nourished by an abiding sense of camaraderie. To all this must be a general recognition that ZANU-PF ZANU-PF is a party of traditions and has been served by successive generations bound together by shared ideals and values which must continue to reign supreme in our, our nation. Hints of intergenerational generation conflict must be resolved through a harmonized melding, melding of old established players as they embrace and welcome new, new rules, new ones through a well and sense of hierarchy and indeed all these matters will be discussed and settled at the forthcoming Congress within the framework of a clear roadmap that seeks to resolve once and for all any omissions or contradictions that have affected our party negatively. The Congress is due in a few weeks from now. I will preside over its processes which must not be prepossessed by any acts calculated to undermine it or to compromise the outcomes in the eyes of the public. As I conclude this address, I am aware that many developments have occurred in the party or have been championed and done by individuals in the name of the party. The failings of the past and the anger this might have triggered in some quarters, such as developments, such developments are quite understandable. However, we cannot be guided by bitterness or vengefulness, both of which would 
not make would not make us any better party members or any better Zimbabweans. Our hallowed policy of reconciliation, which we pronounced in 1980, through which we reached out to those who had occupied and oppressed us for nearly a century, and those who needed fire with in a war surely cannot be unavailable to our own to our own